It's supported by uh, serious investment. This is probably um, the most important thing, uh, and you'll probably have seen this before, uh, but £43 million pounds was put into the plan uh, for the, over the three-year period. The first year, £5.6 million. This was a sort of uh, planning uh, year. Um, and now, of course, we're well into year two, and where the, the big monies appear, particularly on the prevention front, £3.7 million, and the testing, treatment, care, and support front, £10.5 million. Uh, and you can see that steps up to 21 million uh, in year three. And not an inconsiderable amount of money going to information generating initiatives because we want to um, performance manage the plan, which means understanding what's happening out there. And that does cost. Um, and also uh, coordinating the plan, uh, the governance arrangements, the accountability, making sure that. Uh, <coughs> people do what they are meant to be doing uh, and they do it to time. Whoops, I think I've gone ahead. Yeah, so moving to the um, actions um, and just going through uh, some of these. Um, this is on the, uh, on the prevention front and we've got uh, here um, the establishment of prevention networks for all uh, NHS boards. Most of the boards had um, arrangements, um, uh, prevention, um, bloodborne virus prevention uh, arrangements uh, prior to uh, the establishment of, of the plan. But what we wanted to do was to formalize that to make sure that the membership of these networks uh, was appropriate, so they included all the people that I've just mentioned who might not have been included, people in the voluntary sector, people from uh, the prison service. And we also established uh, um, guidance for uh, the terms of reference for this uh, prevention network. And now uh, almost all the health boards have established uh, networks and they've also got prevention leads. And these prevention leads um, uh, uh, come together uh, in a national uh, sort of context. We've got a national prevention leads uh, group as well. So, and in that uh, uh, capacity, they, they, they share best practice. Um, Avril Taylor spoke uh, this afternoon, I don't know if Avril's in the room here, about uh, uh, our guidelines for injection equipment provision. Um, and these are due to be published, uh, all being well this year. They've been held up a bit by the, uh, the, the Lord Advocate. Um, uh, but all being well, uh, what we're going to get is better geographical uh, coverage for injection equipment provision. Uh, opening times are, are, are more uh, <coughs> user uh, friendly. And of course, we heard this morning about inject the importance of injection uh, paraphernalia, the preparation so stuff, and that killer uh, fact of what was it, 37% uh, of infections. Uh, uh, might be attributed to uh, the uh, sharing of injecting paraphernalia. I think it was very, very interesting uh, from Holly uh, Hagen. Uh, and so these guidelines are out. The health boards have had them for some time and we've been encouraging them uh, in the context of the funding that's been made available in year two to actually get on with things. And I know that uh, uh, the health boards are rolling out um, uh, this injection paraphernalia uh, stuff so that injectors will have the full sort of uh, kit, the needle and syringe and all the other bits and pieces. So hopefully we're going to change the whole ethos um, of uh, injecting so that people uh, just automatically uh, use uh, a fresh uh, kit every time they uh, inject drugs. There's a long way to go, but that's the whole idea. It's changing that ethos uh, of, in, of injecting uh, over time. Um, and uh, uh, yes, as I say, we've got the, the funding uh, and uh, that's what they're doing. We have uh, educational initiatives for vulnerable groups, uh, groups and uh, uh, school children. On the school children front, we've uh, piloted some uh, materials which is going to go into the classroom uh, and that's primary schools, secondary schools but also uh, we're looking at further education 
uh, settings as well. On the vulnerable group front, we're talking about current injecting drug users, but also uh, others who might go into injecting who are out there in community uh, settings. And uh, we've, a, we've, we've got a, a national uh, coordinator uh, there who is responsible for taking that forward. I think we're going to go down the, the, the peer-led um, uh, approach because that's what's come out of a literature uh, review uh, and everyone seems to be buying into, in, into that. Uh, and then we have national surveys uh, of uh, hep C and behaviours among IDUs because we want to be able to gauge the effectiveness of all of this uh, uh, investment and uh, we've just uh, finished uh, surveying 2,500 injecting drug users uh, and we've used various techniques which will allow us to estimate the incidence of infection among that group. So we've got baseline data um, and uh, uh, hopefully this work over the next uh, couple of years will lead to a, a fall in the incidence of in infection uh, and we'll be able to uh, and measure that in due course. So that probably will we'll be able to provide some sort of uh, real understanding as to how well all of this has worked in 2011-2012. So that's the uh, uh, prevention front. On the, the diagnosis uh, uh, front, um, well, our awareness raising campaigns to promote testing um, have had to, they had to be uh, delayed because of uh, um, H1N1, swine flu uh, activity. It was going to happen in September, but uh, we thought, God, GPs have got a uh, big enough job just getting, uh, dealing with uh, flu, and then, of course, the vaccination is coming online. So that is going to happen in March uh, 2010. 